Hey, what's up, yo? So, guys, there's a few more people here, but they left. Hopefully, a few more people come. Um, Maybe give it maybe one minute. And we'll start. Uh, What can I say? I mean, I, I have to assume, if you're in a room like this, I have to assume you have some mathematical background. So, but, for example, I'll start slow. Just assume things like you know you bake you know the basics of complex numbers from which I'm gonna build complex geometry. I'll talk about what analytic transformations are, which is it and 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 then naturally the clickbait part is I added the most the like the nicest case of this is usually the Riemann zeta function because when you continue when you do analytic continuation on the Riemann zeta function um you get a, a, a holomorphic function a meromorphic except at a single pole at s equals one so yeah and, and then the connection to the prime number why the the millennium prize problem exists which you know you're probably aware of you can win a million dollars if you prove something and so i've thought about the possibility of using clubhouse like imagine like using clubhouse for collaboration mathematical collaboration what if i created a room in this group like something like this and called it help me prove the gold bar conjecture and then if you're a if you're a number theorist and you go in the room you can talk you could just bounce ideas back and forth and talk about the good conjecture and if it's possible you know that it could lead to a collaboration and maybe you guys write a paper together, maybe solve the problem, who knows, you know what I'm saying? It's a possible use for Clubhouse. It's actually pretty, you know, it's pretty intriguing. But uh, I guess I'll get to the math in this. Let me see how many, it's two people. Two people, it don't matter. You guys are interested in math, I hope. Um. So I guess, yeah, we'll start simple, right? Uh, I'm assuming you're familiar with complex numbers, right? Um, you're used to thinking of them, thinking of them as a what, like a z coordinate, right? A vector, a z vector, and it's usually what z is x plus i y, where you have the real, the x axis is the real axis, and the imaginary axis, the y axis, is i, the unit i times the the real axis so it's i it's r the real num the real number is just called r r direct sum i times r so you have the real numbers on one axis and then i times the real numbers on the y axis so and so that's what the complex numbers are as a really as a vector space but uh they're more than a vector space because they have they have the same vector addition so you add vectors the same way you normally do. Uh, the whole the head to tail method. Uh, you you have two vectors and you want to add two. So vector is a it's an arrow that starts from the origin. So you have in the vector space you have an origin, you have an origin point zero zero or whatever, and we're on the plane, and it's an arrow that ends in some other coordinate one comma two, or any a comma b. And to add two vectors is the usual parallelogram law. Mm -hmm. uh, you you kind of you build a parallelogram out of the two vectors, mm -hmm. and where they meet at the end of the parallelogram, that's what you define to be the vector addition. Now that holds for every, for any vector space over any base mm -hmm. field k k, even finite fields. I mean that's vector addition, but uh. Things, uh, rings have extra rings. Rings, you could say, are vector spaces with additional structure. They have a they have a multiplication, and in this case, the in this case the complex multiplication is special, and that's what the analytic functions have to do with this. That they have so you have the same vector addition. So it's the x y plane. You could think of all the numbers as any vector as z is x plus i y, but if you're probably familiar with with uh, polar coordinates, 
Um, you could also think of it as some z is equal to r times e to the i theta. Using Euler's formula, the e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. Um, you, it's a radius times, this, and then e to the i theta encodes the angle. And you could, you could identify any number in the plane by an xy plane, by an xy coordinate, x comma y. And that's called rectangular rectangular coordinates. But then you also have what's called polar coordinates, which is I can identify any point on the plane by identifying. I also need two bits of information, just like x comma y. But I need this time, I need an r comma theta. R stands for the radius, theta for the angle. R is the radius of the circle uh, on which the point lies on. And theta is the angle what, that it makes on that circle, starting with I mean, from the exact, starting from the positive x-axis, right? So that's the polar version of complex numbers. And complex multiplication and x-y coordinates is pretty not ugly, but it's just it's uh it's unnecessarily cumbersome when you multiply complex numbers using polar coordinates the geometry because you have sines and cosines and angles the geometry pops out and what what it ends up what ends up happening on a, so yeah so like so let's say i have two complex numbers z1 is you could either call it x1 plus let me see z1 you could call it x1 plus i times one i times y1 and z2 x2 plus i y2 so you have those coordinates but and then in polar uh, i could call it z1 it has a radius one times e to the i theta one and then same thing for so in Einstein notation, you have, you know, zi is r i is equal to r i times e to theta i, where I'm just in this, my indices are i, for i equals one and two. Sorry, if you hear stuff, I'm outside, you guys. I'm in my backyard in front of my lake. Forget about math. It happens. Whoa, shit, what was it? Okay, so hold on. Oh, if somebody wants to come up. Like I said, it, I will even if you don't want to talk, if you want to come up, even if it's just because I'll have questions like, what do you guys want me to talk about? And if I ask a question, say, do you want topic A or topic B? You can flash your mic for topic A or B. Let me see what Howard. You can come up. Yeah, if you know any math, especially if you have a math background, I hope. Yeah. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Oh, wonderful. I've been wanting to talk to you. Um, I have a question about something that I think you know a little bit about, and it's sort of akin to what you were just talking about. You know, so if you get a complex coordinate system, if you look at all the set of points at a fixed rate, it's a circle, right? Well, yes. of course, all the points that, uh, you know, in two dimensions, you Correct. So that's just yeah. higher dimensions. I'm starting in one, in one, well, two real dimensions, one complex dimension, but we can go to higher dimensions. I mean, my research. Well, I don't know about expert, but my research is in higher dimensional geometry. Um, so, so basically, so you can in hyperbolic geometry, the same thing is true. If you have a fixed radius, you know, a crazy radius, then the sets of the sub manifold of all points at that fixed radius is also not the minus 25 sub on the real sphere as well. So, hold on. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Wait, wait, okay, hold on. Wait, wait. So you inside, yeah, inside d-dimensional space, you're saying you have a d minus one dimensional sphere. And then what about what yes. about it? 
Sure, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a ver you have it's uh it's the unit. So at every point on your manifold, you have your tangent space, right? So then uh, the tangent bundle. And then on that tangent space, you define the Ramanian metric. And using that metric that defines you use the metric the set of points, the metric G, set of points uh G uh G of X comma X equals one is your unit ball. Is your unit sphere, and then G less than or equal to one is your unit ball, and it's yeah, it's based on the Riemannian metric that you have on it. But yeah, you have a sphere, you have a version of a circle, you have a version of a circle or a disc at every point on the time scale. Yeah. When you work on symmetric spaces of round three, and you also know about one about these symmetric spaces of like one, so far as you can incorporate hyperbolic space or any. Oh, yeah, dude, that's, the, the rank one case is done. I can tell you yeah. anything you want about the rank yeah. one case. And also, of course, there's the projective spaces, which is all the analogous ones. So, my question is, um, what is the subplot? Oh, natural functions on the D minus one dimensional hyperspace are Yeah, yeah, the ones that I, the, Although you, you could do you could do some tweaking and get results for real projective spaces too, but but the 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 complex and quaternionic is actually easy, believe it or not. But go ahead. So you expand your fundamental solution of the functional functions on these spaces, and for the real spaces, right? Uh, what you here is that this schema is order of the So I'm trying to do the exact same thing on these right one symmetric spaces. Damn, how are you? Functions on these spaces, and also um, how are doing these. Hey, my. Hey, Howard. Hold on. Sorry, uh, I just made you a moderator. My phone is about to die. Let me go go get a charger. And I'll be right back. I'm sorry. It's just I'm gonna look like an asshole if I just leave the room and shit. And my phone is gonna die in a second. But if I leave right now and 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 moderator, right. Anything in regards to uh manifolds looking at the eigenvalues of uh Laplace economy is hopefully what I'm asking. I just want to ask over the place, but uh hopefully it's clear what I'm asking. Hey, what's up guys? I'm back. Yeah, actually manifold with holes in them is very general manifolds. Nothing, nothing. Oh no no! So it's very simple. Actually, check this out. It's very simple. You've heard, you've heard of uh, varieties, right? Like algebraic varieties, yeah. or and things like that, right? So, uh, a manifold is a variety without singularity, which means a manifold is a variety that's smooth everywhere. It doesn't have any any edges, any corners. So like. So that's why, for example, you know, a sphere is a, a manifold. It's a variety too, but it's a, it's a manifold. But uh, there's in, there's some cases, if you have, for example, the take the graph of the absolute value, 
right? It's like a V. It has that uh, at the origin? It's got that 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 point of discontinuity, and uh, you can have that variety. You could intersect those two uh, zero sets and get that variety, and so that and what a sort of what a variety is is that at most points, at almost every point, if you look locally, like uh, take the V set. It looks like a manifold. It looks just like the line y equals x or y equals negative x locally, but except that the origin it has a singularity. So a manifold so, and so varieties are allowed to have singularity, whereas manifolds are not allowed to have singularity. Other than that, there's they're about geometrically the same shit, uh, but then there's algebraic geometry and you can talk about shapes and functions, which is more, is another thing. I mean, you know, that's more stuff. But geometrically, uh, manifolds and varieties are similar. Manifolds just don't have singularity. Oh yeah, that's... but yeah, okay. if you well, uh, whatever you were, uh, you can ask your question again, Howard. Mm. I'm interested just because you were talking about yeah. Obviously, yeah. you read my, yeah. you I, yeah. you looked at something. Yeah, so I'm there. This guy knows about some things that I'm really interested in. Oh, dude. So hold on, wait. Do you go to school somewhere? No, no, I'm a, I'm a mathematician like the yes. the National Institute of Affairs and Technology. I'm a research master. Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. fantastic. I mean, I'm, I'm only finishing my PhD, right now. I know, I know, but you, yeah. my, my background's in, in physics, um, and then I got a PhD in, in math at the University of Auckland, New Zealand. Wow. I work in special functions. And um, one area that special functions, uh, actually, I looked at um, fundamental functions of yeah so that's exactly yeah that's exactly what i'm doing sure so my, my ge geometry question for you is and i've been trying to figure this out actually i've been working with our guest for all this stuff see this is what i meant that it could lead to collaboration dude we can like link up and collaborate i mean go well, ask a question but uh we'll get in touch later i followed you so not these, not the real ones, but the complex, the Iconian. Yeah, that's, I mean, those, so, okay, so they're called, so I study mostly the rank, the, so uh, compact rank one symmetric space. If you spell it out, it's C-R-O-S-S. -S. They're called crosses. So to save time, you could call it a cross. Uh, compact rank one symmetric space. Uh the 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 yeah like CPN exactly yeah. but yeah. but the 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 Riemannian case the case where you only have a Riemannian metric is in in a, in a sense more interesting the other case the one that you're talking about if you want to if you want to talk about if it has a complex structure like those are they're called Hermitian symmetric spaces which is this equivalent of saying complex symmetric spaces which is where you're, which is what you're talking about and usually those have more uh. I mean, their theory is a little better. Hold on, I got noise. Oh no, no, it's good. Oh, yeah. It took me a get this too. Uh, no, uh, this. So what I'm saying is, there's a one-way inclusion here. All the Hermitian symmetric spaces have this additional structure. They're Riemannian too. They have Riemann, you can simplify it and get a Riemannian structure. They're Riemannian, but they also have this extra structure that gives them a Hermitian structure. Uh, so, so that the Riemannian is like a, it's like a superset and a subset of, a, so every, you get what I'm saying? Every, every, yeah. every Hermitian is Riemannian. Not every, not every Riemannian is Hermitian. Because because if that, that that came up in my research, if that was true, we would have been done. Like me, there's me and my advisor. There's a point where we were talking about certain eigenfunctions, which is where I think you're going. Um and uh, yeah, I asked him. I'm like, because we needed this rank formula, and the rank formula, and the dimension of the multiplicities, which is the dimension of the root spaces, is one or is even. I'm sorry, yeah, it's even for all Hermitian symmetric spaces. And if that, and if they're all, the, or for actually in the rank one case, they're all one, because so, then we work in the higher rank case. 
And and if they're all rank one, we're done. Like I was like, so then I asked, I asked him, I'm like, Professor, does this mean we're done? Like, are we done? And he said, I mean, he's like, no, because we're talking about ones that don't have this case. Like, we're talking about uh, we're talking about oh, we're talking about all Romanian. So we're it, this includes Hermitian, and it's true for Hermitian, but we're trying to prove it for all for Romanian. So like for a high for a bigger for a bigger set. But go ahead and ask a question. So the question is, is, is really sort of simple. So um, we want to expand these fundamental solutions in terms of the eigenfunctions of this, these embedded subspaces. So there's a fixed geodesic radius on, for instance, complex metabolic space, or in your world, maybe like complex projective space. The question is, the minus one dimensional submanifold is generated by all the points in the manifold with that fixed geodesic radius, and then what are the natural eigenfunctions in that side? Well, okay, hold on. So, do you want to talk about the nice cases, which is symmetric spaces, or any dimensional manifold? Because on different on different manifolds, you have I mean, on arbitrary manifolds, you have to solve a shit ton of of systems of partial differential. Oh shit! Wow, I haven't been talking. Fuck, I was on mute. Um, uh, my question, my question, sorry, my question was uh, if it depends on if you want to talk about the simplest cases, which are the nice symmetric spaces. That's why they they're called. Or or you're talking about any manifold because on any arbitrary manifold. Yeah, you have. Sure, you'd have to solve a shit ton of partial differential equations to like get. To, to do the analogous shit, but but uh, all right, and the symmetric spaces, all right. I mean, um, okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Takeuchi read Takeuchi. Ooh. What do you want to know? What do you want to know? Minus one dimensional submanifold. Which is generated in complex protective space for a fixed geodesic radius. I know on the real ones, there are hyperspheres. Generated at a fixed geodesic radius, a B minus one dimensional manifold, which is generated at a fixed radius in complex protective space. Then, then you might, I love it. You're asking a question, makes sense. Let, let's start, let's start N equals one, CPN, CP1. CP1 yeah. is a sphere. Um, your question on the sphere is equivalent to what the set of complex numbers of norm one. What's your question? I mean, we're gonna generalize in the moment. Fixed radius. They're at a fixed radius. So, in fact, CPN is is a is a compact. So it's a radius that's fixed to an infinity one. You know, it's because of any anyways. You know. So what, what I'm saying is you're talking about spherical things. These 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 objects are spherical. So uh, they're spherical, and what CPN is, or you know, complex, they're spherical. What they're doing is they're parameterizing the set of complex lines through the so imagine comp n-dimensional complex space. Imagine all the lines through the origin, every possible line through the origin. You're parameterizing up to equivalence classes. The, you're create you're constructing the manifold that parameterizes the equivalence classes of uh, of all the lines through the origin. Oh, my friend Casey, here. He, he's cool. But uh, so so you get me. So I mean, so you, so as a manifold, it has that's that's the that's what it represents geometrically. It's parameterizing all the lines through the origin. It literally is c n plus one minus zero divided by the equivalence relation, right? Of uh, if two points are the same, if they lay on, lay on the same line. So that's CPN. I mean, so, and it, and it forms like a sphere. Now, and so, and all these symmetric spaces, including the rank one case, they all come, so they all come from, so you know what Lie groups are? Okay, so they all come from, so whenever you have a Lie group, uh, you have something called, uh, you have some certain, you have, every Lie group has, it's called, uh, the Iwas, Iwasawa, Iwasawa decomposition. Every Lie group 
you can decompose it into into a so G the Lie group equals K A N like can K A N where K K is the maximal abelian no is the maximal compact K is the maximal compact subgroup of G A is the maximal abelian part usually a uh, it usually has the form of a bunch of diagonals. Uh, a, a diagonal system is a, a diagonal subset, like diagonal matrices. So it's a beauty because a diagonal matrix, you multiply diagonal matrices is B. And then, so that's A. And N is the nilpotent or unipotent, which means uh, what, it's the unipotent part, which means it has determinant one, but it could be anything. So it's really like upper triangular. It's like a, it's made, so I, what I'm saying is I can, de, de, actually, I'm, I might be talking, it's a group, it has a group version and a Lie group version and the algebra version for both. But so it has, so for, so they have these comp, decompositions, but so yeah, you got to start with Lie groups and then the Lie groups, they have these special subgroups, these Ks, these uh, maximal compact subgroups. And when you do the quotient of the Lie group by the compact subgroup, by the, by this, yeah, by the, uh, by K. So if you consider G mod K, it has, it becomes, it has this, the, it becomes a symmetric space. And the analogy, if you know from just, you know, reading surfaces, one dimensional shit, uh, the analogy is, how you build the torus. You know how you build the torus in the complex plane? How you take the unit sphere, uh, the unit, the unit square, and you identify the two top sides to build a cylinder, and then you identify the other side to build another cylinder, and it wraps around into a into a donut, into the in torus. Well, that square is called the fundamental domain. Of the shape of in this case of that of that uh donor, that of that torus, but the the fundamental domain and so the symmetric spaces when you do G mod K is the same shit. It's the fundamental domain, the fundamental domain of these symmetric spaces. I can give you the exact definition if you want, or I can let you ask the question. I'm sorry if I'm talking so much. Okay, no, no, hey, if you sorry. want to come up here. No, no, no. Uh, I'm explaining. I'm explaining to you. Uh, basically, so what? No, no. Well, so the thing is, so, so I'm explaining what Riemannian symmetric spaces are. Uh, there's some. There's something more important called generalized flag manifolds. Now, a flag. So you know complex projective space, right? Do you know? Do you know Grassmannians? Yeah. yeah. Okay. They're the general Grassmannians are the generalizations of the generalizations of, of complex. So I remember how I, I described complex uh, CPN as the set of the set of lines through the origin. Uh well, so that's GR, that's the Grassmannian of one-dimensional lines through the origin. But you could have the, the space of k-dimensional subspaces through inside n space, inside n dimensional space, through the origin. So I can have the set of two dimensional subspaces and R5 or C5 and the, the, the manifold that that builds. There's a generalization of projective space and it's called, and it's called Grassmannians. They're all homogeneous spaces. They're all matrix Lie groups. And they all have these subgroups that you can find their fundamental domain by taking this quotient by, by uh, so, so the sub-manifold is a Grassmannian? No, no, no. Uh, they have, they form the, they, they have the structure and actually, like I was saying, like I was getting, so, so for example, uh, no, 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 the special part is, so take CPN, uh, uh, yeah, yes, take CPN, right? You have, in CPN, you can consider ne increasing nested, they're nested, that mean one within another, Oh, you have a zero dimensional subspace inside a one dimensional. So it's a think of algebraic geometry. Let's say you're in n dimensional space. You have a zero, you have a point, which is zero dimensional, that it's on a line, which is one dimensional. Then that line is on a plane, which is two dimensional. 
that plane is inside some three-dimensional space, which is three-dimensional, and so forth. And it, it continues. It, it's, and so it's increasingly nested in the Zerisky topology. It's called CPN. It's a two-dimensional real model. Real, real analysis. It's not right? Yeah. And real, yeah. It's a real two-dimensional real Riemannian manifold. That's what. Sure. No, well, we can talk about this complex dimension. I mean, talking about Riemannian. Yeah, but it's in the real dimensions. So, okay. I want to know so, what is that? So, 2n, it's two dimensional real, real Riemannian manifold. And I want to know what the manifold is at its radius of dimension 2n minus 1 real dimension. You want to. Yeah, so like I said, you'd have to talk about you'd have you'd have to talk you'd have to talk about the geodesic circle around a point at its tangent space. Because the thing is these objects are like spheres. So that at a point, what do you talk what do you mean by a, a circle, a D minus one dimensional subspace? Because well, I mean so again, even in, 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 in art space, right? You can look at the subdimensional, the D minus one dimensional subdimensional, right? Right? And now I want to do this, for instance, at the Okay, right, this is what I'm trying to say. The, what I'm trying to say is that they already are that. They already are that. So, like I said, the, the prototypical example is a sphere, and a sphere is already a D minus one dimensional submanifold of. Rn of Rd, I mean. So that's what I'm saying. They're already d minus one dimensional. They're all. Do you get me? So they're they're already d minus one dimension. They're already exactly the d minus one dimensional. It's called co-dimension one. Like the sphere is co-dimension one, meaning it's one less than dimension of the ambient space. And uh, so yeah, the sphere is co-dimension one, any surface is co-dimension one and three-dimensional space. Uh, but so yeah, so these objects are already co-dimension one. So uh, I mean, if you're asking about co-dimension one of co-dimension, you're asking about co-dimension one things about co-dimension one objects already. <laughs> I don't know, but if you, what I study is, so these, these objects are co-dimension one, uh, like the sphere. And I study these special functions, like eigenfunctions of the Laplace Beltrami operator, that show up everywhere. I mean, they show up in the the, the wave equation, the heat equation, the, the Schrodinger equation, I and mean, everywhere. Fucking in in maybe I think Maxwell, lecture. Yeah, maybe unless whatever the divergence of the curve. Um. So uh, I study eigenfunctions. If you know any, if you know some linear algebra, you know eigenvectors and eigenfunction, uh, eigenvectors, eigenvalues, and eigenvectors, and you get extended to eigenvalues and eigenfunctions and eigenspace decompositions, and that's what we do. Uh, that's well, really cool. well, well, that's how that's how you describe the functions. That's how you, that's how you describe the eigenfunctions. So when you were and actually, if you want a if you want a physical for in case for the like audience, maybe we're losing. Oh, maybe we sound like we're saying too many fancy, weird, long words, like unnecessarily. Uh, the physical interpretation for this, if you've ever studied chemistry and you ever studied uh fucking the quantum mechanics of a, for example, a hydrogen atom, and so everybody's familiar with the Bohr model of the hydrogen of the hydrogen atom, right? The nucleus in the center, and then the orbits of the electrons, right? In, in little concentric circles. And, but uh, now we know it's they're not point particles in concentric circles. They're more like clouds. Of, the nucleus has its particles. It's neutral, and it's positively charged actually, and it has a way, it has like the electron, the electron, it still has shells though. It has these, uh, it has these shells, uh, the, the, the electrons come in these electron cloud shells in what's called the orbitals of the electron, of the, of the atom. 
and the shape. And the shape, you could color code it. So for example, you could color code it. Red means less probable and blue means more probable. Plus this is a probability distribution. You can color code it and you get, so if you Google right now, uh, atomic orbital and click images and you'll see what I'm, you'll see all these shapes. And those are the, and uh, those shapes that you see, the functions, the, the, the functions that give you those fucking shapes or those orbitals are exactly the eigenvalues of the Laplace Beltrami is exactly the eigenvalues you get for the sphere and for, for complex CPN, complex projective space. Uh, and they're called, and they have a special name. I mean, they're famous. They, they're, uh, they're, uh, they're, they're known for, they, they're, they're special. They're called, you may have heard of them. They're called the spherical harmonics. And why are they called the spherical harmonics? Because one, they're on the sphere. And two, their heart, they come from harmonic polynomials. Do you know do you know what a harmonic function is? Sorry for talking so, so long. Are you still there, man? Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, actually, you know, you're at some university, so you know what a harmonic function is. Um uh, yeah, this uh uh the eigen the eigen functions. What we discovered is that the eigen functions all come from happen to uh, all all happen to come from uh, harmonic polynomials of a special type restricted to the sphere, for example, or to CPN, to the flag manifold, which is kind of what I was talking about earlier. But uh, but yeah, but so and so it's a we give an explicit way of computing because because if not the eigenfunctions for the, the spherical harmonics, they have an integral representation. It's been known since Helgeson. 50 years, the sphere is, but it's a, the representation of, it's an integral representation. It doesn't tell you how to, how to explicitly compute them, right? Um, it's just an integral, long ass, complicated ass integral. Um, we found a method to, to compute them explicitly using harmonic polynomials restricted to, to, to the flag manifold. And yeah, and that's kind of, and that's one of, that's so much. That's among the main results of my paper. I a lot with oh no, yeah, yeah. So uh I had to learn a shit to, like he said, oh my god, you're the only person yeah, yeah, yeah. you function. what did you say? You said the Taki for God's sake. You said you're the only other human being I know in the universe that has that, that knows that knows that, that uh, book. Right. Are you talking about modern are you talking about modern spiritual function? Dude, I got that book and almost Dude, that was fucking the pages. Yeah, page, the pages were getting sticky. Dude, that was jerking off in front of me on the pages. The pages are getting sticky because I'm jerking off in the pages. It's like the um, uh, the Rosetta Stone. Well, that's no, really great, but I mean, the Bible is hell. I mean, I don't no, know. It's, it's almost too abstract for me. It's, it's really not. Like, it it was. A, it was. It was at the beginning, but. I, I, I thugged it out with Helgeson for so long. And the shit is... No, no, no. The thing is, no. I studied with Russians and Bulgarians. And these guys are fucking machines. And they only... like for, My professor, I mean, he's got 30 years on it. He's like 60 years old, maybe. Or 57, I don't know. Uh, like, for him, it's Helgeson or nothing. It's I would bring him other books. Anthony Knapp. I, like, I'll try... But every time I bring him a book, he's like, let me see the author. First thing he cares about is let me see the author. Because if it's not an author he knows, forget about it. He was like, I don't care what that book says. Like, and so, yeah, and for him, he you know, made me, my, he made me read Helgeson. I did my PhD in mathematics with Rod Gover. I don't know if he's a differential geometer. Nice. Also, Where at? Also, again? He, he, he's in New Zealand, University mm -hmm. of Auckland, New Zealand. Yeah, and also um, with Tom Terrell, who's an analyst. So, so I do analysis, real and complex analysis. Oh, um, nice. Economic is sort of with uh, it's fundamentally well fixed in fundamental solutions. So I have to apologize. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to bail because I gotta. Oh no, dude! It was a fucking pleasure, bro. It was an absolute pleasure. Whenever. Your videos on YouTube. 
I'm impressed you're also looking at these wrong cues. Oh, no, 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 dude. I classified range two, but we have we have the results for rank R, any rank. Yeah. I mean, we have certain quantization results. Uh, and and then we prove general quantization, res general results for higher rank, but then we only compute some case, some rank two cases and shit. The explicit way to find the eigenfunctions. We only show some high, some maximum rank. Because uh, no, but the idea is the idea is that like I mean you could generalize it. Like if we wanted to, we could compute whatever we wanted. We just fucking would our hands would get tired before we were done. Well, like, I might I might send you some. Reprints but the 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 theory the, the theory is there. The theory is there. Huh? Send you some, some reprints and some preprints. Either preprint. Oh, yeah, dude. Do you have Twitter yeah, or Instagram? Do you have Twitter or Instagram? Because Clubhouse, the worst thing about Clubhouse is that there's no DMing. Okay? I know, I know. So, no, do you have. Oh, it's on my paper. So, I go to read any of my papers and go to the bottom. And... Your papers, so. yeah, it's all my papers. papers. Oh, hey, that that email address is exactly for mathematical questions, of course. I got a bell. Really awesome, man. Thank you, Howard. Thank you for being for coming up here, man. It was absolutely a fucking a delight to talk to you, man. For real. Have yeah. a good one, man. Take care. Damn, that was awesome, dude. Shit, K. I'm so happy you got to see this shit. Hey Rick, what's up? Come up here, Kay. Hey Rick, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Are you of Venezuela? No, I'm Colombian. No, no, well, it was just literally the country next door. It's there's almost no difference between Colombians and Venezuelans. But yeah, I'm South American. But but I was raised in the States for the most part. I was born in, in Colombia, South America. But uh, I was, but I, but from like seven years old, I was raised in the United States. I lived in New York, New Jersey, and then finally I moved down south to, I mean, South Florida, to Miami. And I've been in Miami. I mean, I I've moved around. I've lived in Indianapolis for like two years. I was working and going to school. I've been around a little bit, but most part I was raised in Miami. I mean, it wasn't so bad, but honestly, I couldn't wait to come back. You know? But the thing is, I'm Spanish. I'm Hispanic. And there was no Hispanic food. When I would fucking, I mean, I noticed this within a month of being there. I, when I would ask people, bro, is there a Hispanic restaurant? Because I'm just too used to eating my whole life, eating Hispanic food, bro. And when I would ask people, at least a Mexican restaurant, please, anything. They would be like, oh, there's a Taco Bell. Some Taco Bell was fucking Hispanic food. That's how bad it was. There was. No, man. You're, you know, the best. You're talking about Chipotle and Cadoba or some shit. I went to a mix. They had a Mexican restaurant that I went to. It was garbage. Uh, that shit was. There's one Mexican restaurant in town. There was a lot of good, a lot of good food, other food, uh, because of the, the university, there were so many Indian students, fucking Chinese, Korean, Turkish, they had so many restaurants of all, all those, everything I just named, there was a Turkish restaurant, Korean barbecue, fucking, so there was mad good shit. I don't know, we should even talk about math, because I guess that's what the room is about, we're talking about, well, I'm talking about food at the university where I studied math. One of the universities. Um, well, yeah, well, well, with Howard, however, he had to he had to bounce. So I don't know if you, I don't know if you do math or want to have any questions, or you want me to just, or I could continue on my little uh, rant, kind of. Sure, no problem. I mean, I have a small audience. Okay, let me just say what's up, man. Come up here and say what's up, bro. It's, I mean, I, there you go. How's it going? I was just going to line for my turn. Yeah, oh, man, I'm home. So, hold on, wait. Yeah.
You're in line for what? Oh, no, that's cool. I'm hoping how much how much did you hear of of fucking everything? You heard a good amount? Yeah, you guys were talking about the Grassmannian. Uh, oh, yeah, we talked about projective spaces and Grassmannians as examples of the symmetric spaces, which are quotients of leap. They're quotients of the and special manifolds known as continuous groups, leap groups. They have their own name. They're called leap groups. You take special quotients. So like the prototype, the prototype is a uh, take. So, you know, this SU, the SU means special unitary. You know, SU2, like, for example, S, well, there's no SU1 because it's redundant. There's a U1. U1 is a circle. Literally, geometrically, U1 is a circle. U2, well, U2 is, you take a special, the special ones, meaning determinant one. SU2 is, SU2 is the three-dimensional sphere. And whatever, these objects are fucking, they're like this. And so, I mean, the quotients look like these fucking compact subspaces, like these compact manifolds. Yeah, could you talk a little bit? So I actually don't have, maybe I'm missing 